Hey guys, before you watch this video, click the description box below. We got the Ripped It 50 Deluxe, the ultimate bundle to take your health to the next level. And enjoy the video. Hey guys, Troy Casey, Certified Health Knot here at Muscle Beach. I brought Savage and St. Michael Holt from Alpha Tribe. He's gonna teach us some martial arts today. Michael, take us through a little bit of your history and what you're gonna teach us today. Yeah, I've been practicing martial arts for about 10 years now. and. Uh... You know, the highest evolution of martial arts is about just moving your body in interesting patterns, cultivating a fertile mind state and an intelligent body so that you can be healthy, but also be dangerous. And then use those skills in service out in the world. Not to hurt people, but to help people. So health is the bottom line platform of martial arts. Health and the evolution of the spirit, because really, can you claim to be peaceful if you can't if you're not capable of violence. If you're capable of violence and you still choose peace, that's a high expression of peace. If you couldn't bust a grape in a food fight, then you're a pacifist by compulsion. Okay, what are you gonna walk us through today, Michael? And just some basic movements, tools to warm up, get a light sweat going. If you're gonna move your body, you might as well also train your body to be combative. You know, we could do simple stretching and warm ups and jumping rope, or we could do a little, work, learn some shadow boxing. I got my sticks and my knives. We can play together. Um, just moving the body in new and interesting ways and learning how to fight, how to move. Great, so I don't have any training in this whatsoever, so this will be good for me. I love cross training, I love expanding my mind, I love expanding my body, and so this will be good for me, because it, you know, aesthetically, I may look like I have some level of expertise, but let me tell you, I'm a novice at heart. And I, I'm sorry, but I really believe that it's not about learning to fight, it's about waking something up in your body, particularly for men, martial art is so useful because there's something in you that there's a primal urge that just wants to <clears throat> and protect. And so when we find a healthy container, like exercise and training, we let that out of us so that when we're in the world, we can be peaceful. But uh, modern man doesn't have the opportunity to just rage out. You know, we're stuck at a desk all day and stuff gets stuck in our body. So here we come outside, we move, we throw some punches, we throw some kicks, we swing a stick, we swing a knife. And the paradox of martial art is the, the better you become at violence, the more peaceful you become because you're always moving it through your body. Yes, and this has been my summation. I'm good friends with Ty Mock, who did uh, uh, The Last Dragon. He played uh, Bruce Leroy in that funny film oh, right on. that was made. And he's very peaceful. Uh, and then Chrome Gracie as well. I mean, I know he's a killer, but uh, you, killer. Meet, you, you meet him in person and he's just that 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 Zen master. And, and, and so um, they have the capabilities of being both sa savage and sane. That's the duality, man. We want to play all the notes on the spectrum, you know? So we can go whatever the moment demands of us, we can embody that fully and truthfully. Sweet. So thank you, and I'm excited. Right wow. We'll start to stand with the feet, shoulder width distance.
shoulder forward, left shoulder back. Here you go, both shoulders back. Right forward, left back. Really encourages the rest of the There you go, bro. Make it fluid. Yeah, Chi style. So reverse, left shoulder forward, right shoulder back. So like when it comes to cultivating power and striking, the body has to be Shoulder, let the arm catch the bottom. <laughs> Let me just put it all together. I just throw my arms back, come back to center, circle. Now mentally, then you just let the body. Just come back to the center. Practice throwing some balls. Nice, good. So footwork is crucial in, in all martial art, particularly in the martial, Filipino martial art called Kali or Eskrima or Arnis. Um, all the footwork is based on the shape of a triangle. So we work, our, we work the footwork on what's called the male triangle and the female triangle. It's a way to step off center line and evade strikes. So we can use the concept of the triangle as a way to warm up before exercise. Just pump up the quads, pump up the hamstrings and encourage the capacity to stay light on the feet. So here I have the collie sticks. This would be considered the male triangle because the point of the triangle is forward. This would be considered the female triangle because the point of the triangle is back. So if I was to practice my footwork on the female triangle, I would just step here. See, I just get my head off center line and I can use my off. Together, just imagine that triangle in front of you and step on that triangle. Just stay light on your feet. Just getting the head off center line and getting to your opponent's flank. Female triangle. If you wanted to add the hands, as I step, I would imagine that I'm parrying a punch here and then I'm getting my guard up. So if you were to throw a punch at me,
I'm a lawn guy, but I want to keep my opponent outside. You want to stay inside my house. Some things you have to get through. You know what I mean? So some, every martial artist, like a dance, has its own philosophy. See lot is, I'm coming in and stop Muay Thai. But we find these flavors of expression in our body, then we can bring them out into the world. Uh, it doesn't I have to be combative, it can be a physical or something that is not like this. But it's not, it, don't, it doesn't exist in your body. So just some basic fundamental striking from Muay Thai. We'll start with the most important thing, which is the stance. You are right-handed, so am I, so we always want to fight in our left lead so that our power end is in the rear so you can turn that hip over and generate massive movement. But before we even get there, we have to look at the stance. So you're going to have your left foot forward. If you just take a few steps, the space between your legs should be about the same as a, a comfortable gait for you. Right, so we're not we're not so wide that we can't really move, and we're not so narrow that we don't have any stability side to side. So if you would just be right about here. Now your left toe is pointed straight ahead, and your right toe is going to be about 45 degrees off center. Now the problem with you right now, don't move, is that your heels are on one track, so you don't have any stability side to side. So imagine two railroad tracks, and you want to make sure each heel is on a separate track. So I have. Some balance side to side. See what I mean? So, so left toe is pointing straight ahead. Right toe is about 45 degrees off the center line. Now look, your heels are still on the same line. There you go. That's good. Now you want to come up off that right heel because you want to have some balance in the legs and be able to bust the kick off without having to come up off the heel. If you're on your heel, you're going to be slow. So the heels really never touch the ground. That's good. You just get used to that feeling. Just shift from the right to the left. In Muay Thai, they say it's like a piece of kelp in the ocean. You're rooted to the ocean floor, but you're also very fluid with the upper body. No tension. And so, so then we want to look at the upper body. So imagine that you're putting your hood on and then you're talking on two cell phones. So my forearms, my elbows are protecting my rib cage and my other organs. Exactly. And the line between my chin and my hands always uh, intersects. I don't want my chin to peek out over my guard because that's pretty hard. So your head is down, the back is rounded, elbows are tight, and then from here just get used to that shape. Just bounce it from one foot to the other. Left toe straight ahead, right toe 45 degrees off center. Up on the balls of your feet, particularly the right heel is a little higher. Put your hood on. We're talking on two phones. Chin is tucked. From here we just move from one foot to the other. the jab, I just turn the shoulder over and it's these two knuckles that I want to connect with. Nice and easy. And as soon 
soon as you throw the punch, it's like a race how fast you can get it back to your face. Because here, I'm protected. Here, I'm open. So I want to spend as much time as I can protecting it. I come right back. Less tension in the body, the faster the punch is going to be. The punch is very relaxed until the very last second. Ah, there's some tension, and then it's back to be completely relaxed. <laughs> well, know you're doing it right if you can start to feel your own shoulder touch your jaw. Okay. Good to let that go. Now we throw the rear hand. See how it's not just my arm. It's my. It starts with my ball of my foot. I turn the hip over. Body. So the straight right hand, if, without moving my arm, would look like that. Good. Less, less. Throw a punch. Come back to your stance. Just bounce. Relax. Throw another punch. And so now we work the one, two, the jab, cross. Bop, bop. Notice, I throw the jab, and it's the retraction of my jab that activates my right hand. So it's not pop, pop. You know that uh, Native American instrument with the drum and the arms that come on? Yeah. It's the rotation of the spine that generates the power. So as I pull the jab back, that activates the thumbs. Yeah. Yeah. What would it look like if you can see my feet without moving my arms? Like I was saying, in Muay Thai, they call the, the art of eight limbs because there's eight weapons available to you. Uh, both punches, both elbows, both knees, and the kicks. And there's nine weapons, bang, if you're playing dirty. You're not in a sneaky headbutt. <laughs> That's considered dirty? Or That's that fair play? It's, well, Muay Thai is a sport governed by rules. So the headbutt in Muay Thai is against the rules. Now, in the street, there's no rules, so you can add the headbutt. There's also Bur not allowed in anything, right? There's Burmese boxing called Lith Wei, where they fight basically it's Muay Thai style, bare knuckle, and they allow headbutts. It is one of the most brutal brutal sports you could ever see. It's nasty. But then we have the arts like Kali or Silat, which are not sports. They're not governed by rules. These are from parts of the world that it's there these are technologies that were cultivated by warriors through the ages for combat or bladed weapon combat so something like jiu-jitsu or muay thai wrestling boxing are sports that have rules then you have your self-defense martial arts kali silat that are purely about incapacitating an opponent protecting yourself from them shit mike <laughs> And I just want to let you guys know, besides a little bit of Taekwondo when I was probably eight or nine years old, I have no martial arts experience. And uh, I think this is going to be some good training for me because uh, I have a lot of aggression and fire inside of me. And I think it needs to be channeled in a, in a, in a good way. And, and I like different forms of cross training. Sure. So I'm, I'm very excited to um, explore this. and. Uh, and take it slow so I can get on my track and then find my groove and, and just like I did the Qigong, I got seven years into it now and it's it's a part of my, my, my myself and 
Um, I still consider myself a novice, but at least I have uh, some form of flow. Um, and so I appreciate you taking the time with me. Michael. It's my pleasure, man. I love this is this is what I love to talk about. This is what I love to teach. This is what I love to love to move. And you know, like you, when I got into this ten years ago, I was a different person. I, you wouldn't maybe you wouldn't recognize me. Um, internally, I was much different. But through the practice of combative art, I moved a lot of junk through my body, and now I find myself simultaneously as dangerous and as peaceful as I've ever been. Yeah, and. Being in person, the fucking power is powerful, Mike. I wouldn't want to fuck with you in the street. <laughs> I wouldn't want to fuck with you in the street either, man. Uh, knife versus knife. Knife versus empty hand. Stick versus knife. Double stick versus empty hand. Yep. So, the first thing to do if an individual has a knife is give him what he wants or just get out of there, right? This, Kali and Sealot are not about defending yourself against the knife, they're about knife fighting. You know, these come from cultures where somebody might show up on your door and say, I'm the best knife fighter in the neighborhood, not you, so you need to have a knife fight. And I'm not encouraging anyone to get into a knife fight. Just, just get out of there or get what they want, because what happens in a knife fight is one person gets maimed and the other person gets killed. You don't want to win. Right? But just, just as an expression of moving the body and cultivating sensitivity and training the eyes to see the lines, we just do a very basic knife drill. So if I feed you this line and you block with this hand, what happens? You open up this deck. Okay. So in, in uh, Kali, they teach what's called the cross block. So if the knife comes from this side, I block with this hand. And I use my forearm because I could, I'll give this up. This is a bone. A cut here won't kill me. A cut here is a bigger problem and a cut here is a really big problem. So you turn toward the knife and you kind of create this structure like here, like okay, you might, just like that, you might cut my forearms but you won't cut my belly. And then you just feed the knife through and then as the, knife, as the line comes on the other side, you switch the grip to the other side. It's going to be easier to practice than to explain. So why don't I show you, here's what I want you to feed. You feed here, real slow, see that's how, that's how slow I want you to feed. And you feed here, just have a look at me. You see? I'm going to give you the knife. So you're going to feed this line. Yep. Then you're just going to let me take your arm down. And then you're going to feed this one. So you feed it here. Pull this down. And right when I get to 6 o'clock yep. is when I switch. Now you're trying, to, you're trying to get in. And this is where the sensitivity comes in. I'm feeling that and I'm giving a structure that you can't get. So you're trying to get to my belly. Yeah, and I'm just going to feed It's not really going to be like this. This is a drill. Just learning the drill. And then in time, we can start to insert the other hand, right? So here. The primary concern is the blade. But I might as well poke your eye. That's going to give you something to think about. Your fucking power is incredible, dude. I insert the other hand. You see how I'm...
whole bunch of locks on the arm or disarms or pokes to the eye and stuff, but that's just a, a very basic drill that we do. Now you're starting to see what I mean by sensitivity of the martial arts. Yeah. Feeling energy. Yeah. Now of course you can apply that to emotions, your own and the emotions of others. But it starts just by being empty and receptive and not trying to feel where the energy moves. So what do you see in the self-defense world? Well, my path has led me to look, and this is what I'm about. I recently figured out this is what I'm about. I'm about self-defense, but we have to define self-defense. And for me, it means three things. One, making yourself hard to kill. Strength training and martial art combative training. Phase two is making it hard for nature to kill you. You know, Live healthy, live in accordance with the principles of nature. Take deep breaths, eat whole food, go to sleep, take care of your body. And number three is defense against delusion. The spiritual practice of meditation so that the self, you can have the direct experience of a self that needs to be defended, dissolve. And you recognize that you are the all. So that is self-defense. And I think that it's an umbrella term for, it's really the path of the peaceful warrior. To be capable in battle, to be healthy and aligned with nature, and to be connected to the source. Powerful, brother. Thank you, Michael. Hey guys, I'm excited to let you know that my team has developed one-on-one -on -one coaching as well as two different health communities that you can choose from. Um, it's all there to upgrade your mastery in your life and your dedication to your life. The invitation with me is always to go deeper. So we've got one-on-one -on -one experiences um, deep on the land, climbing these mountains, jumping in the cold waters, everything to turn your body on to the highest level so that you can live the life of your dreams. So click the link below and uh, we'll see you soon.